Let me start with this. Blogging is not the same as it used to be eight years ago when I started, and not the same as it was even two years ago. A lot has changed with AI. I will talk today about how AI has changed blogging and in what ways blogs are still very helpful. These days, the way most bloggers monetize is slowly shifting towards more diversification. It used to be based on display ads only for many bloggers, but we need to be more creative about monetization moving forward, and I'll talk about it later in the video. But first, let me tell you, if I were starting a blog today, what things would I still keep as before? For one, the blogging platform, or you can call it a content management system or CMS for short. I would still start a blog on WordPress. You can, of course, build a website on one of the many AI tools, but WordPress is still the most established platform used on over 40% of all websites on the internet. It has the biggest number of themes and plugins, and it's stable. It's been tried and tested by website owners for decades. AI website builders are cool, but in my world, old school, WordPress still wins for all the reasons that I mentioned. Next, I would definitely make sure to pick a WordPress theme very well, because rebuilding or fixing a website can take more time and effort than starting it from scratch. And one thing that I would prioritize when I choose the theme is not what most beginners do. I would not focus on how the theme looks, but on the site speed that can be achieved on this theme. You see, you need great site speed, not just because it's easier for you to work on the blog or for your visitors to access your content. It is one of the critical ranking factors that can help your site get more traffic from both Google SEO, search engine optimization, and the new AI SEO. These are the mentions that you, your site can get in different AI responses on Google AI Overview, on ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, and other LLMs. And in case you didn't realize how big AI search already is, it is about to overtake traditional Google search by 2028, according to a major study by SEMrush. And after years of working with different themes, as well as reading feedback through hundreds of comments and discussions in blogging groups on Facebook, I came up with my personal short list of great WordPress themes that are fast loading and lightweight. These are Cadence, Point Them Out, Generate Press, and Bloxy. Like most things in the WordPress ecosystem, they all have free versions and paid options with additional features, but you can always try the free version and when you know how it works, you can decide to upgrade. Next, if I were starting today, I would be more strategic about the plugins that I install on my website. To keep it light and fast, we should not install anything that is not essential. Now, what is essential for your blog to be stable and grow traffic over time? First, following the topic of website speed, we need to get a good performance plugin. It basically saves a version of your pages so, so that they can load instantly for visitors. I prefer the WP Rocket plugin for this. And you want to do something about your images on the site. If you have a lot of large images, uh, for example, like I have on my site, it can slow down your page a lot. So you need a plugin like Imagify and compress all your images without losing quality. I'll drop links to all the plugins and tools that I mentioned today in the description below. Another plugin that every blog needs is for SEO, search engine optimization, and I would not reinvent the wheel here, and I would just use the Rank Math plugin, which has the highest rank among SEO plugins in the WordPress library. And we are talking about their free version. It has the most features compared to other SEO plugins. Rank Math kindly sponsored this part of the video, but I've been recommending this plugin for years to my blogging friends and clients because the free version covers so much of what we need for SEO. You don't need to learn everything about SEO before installing it, because the plugin has an intuitive setup wizard guide. And if you choose the easy mode, which I think is the best for beginners, 
It will tell you what to click and you will just have all your Google services like Google Search Console, uh, Google Analytics connected in just a couple of clicks. Rank Math supports over 16 types of schema markups. They're also called rich snippets and you will be able to optimize your posts in just a few clicks. And unlike other plugins, the Rank Math allows you to optimize your posts for multiple focus keywords per post, up to five keywords in their free version. And I'm adding here the sixth keyword because I use the pro version. And what I personally find very helpful is that you can also use a Rank Math for Pinterest website verification. You need to do it uh, to get attribution for all pins that are linked to your website on Pinterest. And because I rely on Pinterest for most of the traffic, and I've been doing it for many years now, and um, I've taught Pinterest marketing to thousands of people, I've always recommended using an SEO plugin to verify your website on Pinterest. To do it in Rank Math, you first go to Pinterest account settings, find link to Pinterest, copy the verification ID that Pinterest provided, and then in Rank Math under general settings and webmaster tools, find Pinterest verification and simply paste this ID. The plugin will install the code where it has to be. You don't risk making mistakes or breaking anything when you try to manually add this code without the technical skills. The pro version of Rank Math has an advanced schema generator and you get access to formats like frequently asked questions, data set, movie or podcast episode. And using the pro version, you can also analyze a competitor site as I did for another blogging website here. Another very helpful feature is Content AI, and you will get 750 Content AI credits for free. It uses the power of AI to help you optimize your content. The feature will analyze articles of your competitors that rank well. The feature will suggest your article length for the best results, how many images, headings, and which keywords you should include. It will tell you which sections of your page should be longer, and you can even use AI without leaving your WordPress dashboard to add more text to your article if needed. You can even bulk generate titles and descriptions for multiple posts on your website at once using Content AI feature. If you want to try Rank Math, check the first link in the description below. Thank you, Rank Math, for sponsoring this part of the video. And we're moving to the next important thing that I would definitely do if I were starting my blog today. Pinterest traffic. For over eight years, Pinterest has been my biggest traffic source. It still works the same way. And it actually supported many bloggers through the difficult transition when their Google SEO traffic dropped in the past few years because, because of the algorithm changes and the increasing share of AI answers in search results. Yes, Pinterest traffic has had its own challenges for bloggers because of AI images as well. It is hard to find non-AI images on Pinterest in many niches today, but the platform is actively trying to balance AI content out and they first started labeling AI-generated images. They're getting better at identifying AI images, but if you know for sure that your pin is not an AI image, but it has the label, as a content creator, you can content Pinterest support and appeal this label. And recently, Pinterest even added a new feature in the account settings that allows users to filter out all AI-labeled pins from their feeds. They can even decide if they are okay with AI for some niches and not okay for other niches. Some bloggers have seen lower traffic because there is way more competition now on Pinterest. It is easier for their competitors to create massive amounts of pins with AI. Other bloggers have used AI images heavily and instead of, say, 10 pins per day, they were able to publish up to 50 pins per day some of them got their Pinterest account suspended. Others have seen an increased traffic in the past year from Pinterest. And if you want to learn more about getting free Pinterest traffic to your website, then check my free on-demand class. I will link it in the description below. But now I think it's the right time to talk more in depth about the situation with AI and blogging. Before you make your decisions about using AI, you need to ask yourself two critical questions. 
First, how am I going to make money with a blog? And second, where is my traffic coming from? Because here is what people don't realize. The rules are completely different depending on your answers to these two questions. Like if you're selling services on your website or running an e-commerce store, then using AI content isn't going to destroy your business. Your income isn't tied to whether your blog posts are AI generated or not. But if your monetization model is through display ads, then you should know that the biggest ad management companies like Mediavine and Raptive are actually making effort to find and remove from their networks the websites that use low effort, mainly AI generated content. And this includes both AI generated text and images that are generated with AI. So there are risks associated with using AI in terms of monetization, even if you get a ton of Pinterest traffic. You still need to be accepted with your blog to these premium ad networks and you need a decent quality of content to get there. Even if it's easy to generate more content and faster with AI, having original photos in your content and on your Pinterest account, images that are obviously created by a human can easily become your competitive advantage in the sea of AI-generated images. In this sense, I actually can tell you that the entry level is easier for beginners today because you don't have to become a professional photographer and post highest quality of photos. Since AI tools are trained on those kind of photos, they often look too good to be real. And if your photos are average and less polished, they often look more like human created images. And from what I've heard, Mediavine actually prefers stock photos over AI images right now, even though stock photos often look staged. But if you're trying to stay safe with the ad networks, that's what they're saying. Now let's talk about traffic sources and how they treat AI content. If you're getting visitors from, say, Facebook, you've got way more breathing room right now with AI. Facebook, at least as of now, doesn't seem to care about AI content. But if you're counting on Google for all your traffic, then you need to be way more careful because Google definitely doesn't want to see mass-produced, one-click AI articles flooding the search results. And I already mentioned that Pinterest has a lot of AI images ranking high, but they're trying to find a balance with human-generated images in the feed. And how I think we can use AI these days is more as an assistant, but not an autopilot. So when I'm writing uh, content, maybe I will have AI suggest the next sentence or help me rephrase something or pull up some additional research or help me with the best keywords for SEO, but I'm the one in control of the document. I will often use AI to give me a starting point, but then I go in and rework it in my own voice. It just stops me from staring at a blank screen. I think the right way to use AI as a blogger today is to help you work faster, but you're still doing the actual writing and editing. You're maintaining your voice and your quality standards. But again, the rules around AI content are changing fast, so keep your ear to the ground and use common sense. That's really all you can do right now. Now, all the traffic strategies that I mentioned mean nothing if you make this one massive mistake that most bloggers make. Ignoring email marketing. You should build your email list from day one. Look, most new bloggers completely ignore email marketing in the beginning. They wait until they have been blogging for a few years, maybe until Google tanks their traffic or Pinterest changes their algorithm, and then they panic because they realize they don't actually own their audience. Don't make that mistake. Here is what you need to understand. Email is the only traffic source that you actually control. Google can change how they rank sites tomorrow. Pinterest can decide that your content doesn't fit their vibe anymore. Facebook can do whatever Facebook does. All of that can disappear overnight and you have zero say in it. But your email list, that's yours. Nobody can take it away from you. It's a direct line to people who actually want to hear from you, and it can drive consistent traffic and income 
no matter what's happening with algorithms. And listen, most people who land on your site are never coming back. Seriously, you worked so hard to get that visitor and they're gone forever, unless you have a way to stay in touch. That's why you need an email signup form from day one. Use something simple like Kit, previously called ConvertKit. They let you collect up to 10,000 subscribers for free. You can add with it a pop-up or an embedded form on your posts. And don't just throw up a boring subscribe to my newsletter form. That converts terribly. Give people a reason to hand over their email address, maybe create a free guide, a checklist, a cheat sheet, a discount code, something that they actually want that's relevant to your content. Because the numbers don't lie. Email marketing has an average ROI of $36 for every dollar you spend on it. That's one of the best returns you will find in online marketing. Now, traffic sources will always be unpredictable, but your email list stays with you no matter what happens. And this brings me to the most important shift that you need to make this year. Stop building a traffic business and build an audience business instead. Look, most bloggers have been completely dependent on display ads for many years. We've all been chasing page views, obsessing over RPMs uh, in display ads, um, trying to game algorithms to get more traffic to squeeze out a few more dollars from Mediavine or Raptive. And I get it, ad revenue is nice and kind of feels passive when it is working. But that entire business model is built on something that you don't control. An audience-based business is different. It's about finding people who genuinely want to hear what you have to say, building a real connection with them, and then creating your own products or services that solve their problems. That's where the real money is. And more importantly, that's where the stability is. Because here's what happens when you only rely on display ads. One algorithm change and your income can drop to 50%, for example. Your entire business is at the mercy of Google, Pinterest, or whatever platform is sending you more traffic. You're basically renting your income from someone else. But when you have an audience and your own products, you are in control. You can send an email and make sales. You can offer services, launch a course, a membership, digital products, do coaching, whatever makes sense for your niche. Your income isn't tied to how many random people stumble onto your site from Google or social media. The traffic will always be important, obviously. You need people to find you. But traffic generation is the only thing that's gotten harder about blogging. Everything else, like creating valuable content, building relationships with your audience, developing products that people want, that foundation is still rock solid. So yes, work on your SEO, build your Pinterest presence, but don't stop there. Focus on turning those visitors into an actual audience that knows you, trusts you, and wants to buy from you. That's how you build a business that cannot be wiped out by the next Google update. And because everything that's good and solid takes time to build, I can tell you the same thing that I've been telling beginner bloggers for years. Don't quit your day job to start a blog. Start it in your free time, work on it on your weekends, and build your way up to a stable income. It could easily take you maybe a year or two years to get to a point when you feel confident and that your blogging income is more predictable. If you found this video helpful, then give me a like and subscribe for more videos like this on my channel. And now, if you want to future-proof your blog and learn more about getting visitors from those AI answers in Google AI overviews, ChatGPT, and other LLMs, I have a video linked up there for you. See you in the next one.